Wayne, following on from last week for, with our episode, the inside track, of course, can you update us, please, on Everton's point deduction verdict and what's happening with the club at the moment? Yeah, I mean, Everton have said, have confirmed they're going to appeal again against the points deduction. And Sean Dyche has also spoken publicly for the first time since the commission's findings. And he's been um, sort of very critical of the severity of the punishment. And the, that process is now underway. And um, rival Premier League clubs have also launched um, a joint complaint as well um, for damages against Everton. So, you know, the... The, the ball is very much rolling on 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 all on all in all areas at the moment. And Keith, what was your instant reaction to the news, and sort of how has that changed over the last ten days as more information has come out? I was uh, surprised, like many people, at the severity of the punishment. Uh, the ten points just seems completely um, out of uh, out of scale in terms of the offences, especially when I read the actual um, submissions. And I think more importantly, up until um, until the hearing sort of uh, released its its findings, we had been told that the Premier League and Everton had been working together over a long period of time to try and resolve these issues. And so I was very surprised at the outcome um, when, I, when it did come out. Wow. I mean, that's, that's big news, actually. And, you know, one thing that we discussed last week was obviously this is the same as what Portsmouth had when they went into administration. Keith, do you think 10 points is quite harsh? Because it seems to be that most Premier League fans are in agreement that actually this is a really, really difficult punishment for Everton to face, despite the fact they are appealing, of course. Yeah, look, I've been around football 20 years now and uh, I've seen draconian sort of punishments on different minor things before in many different cases in football, either from the FA, not so much from the Premier League, but mainly from the FA. And punishments that in a normal court of law in day to day would never, ever happen. And it seems to be that sometimes there is a a feeling that people have to sort of beat their chest and show off a bit about the power they have. And I think we're in a bit of that complex right now. It's quite interesting, Keith, wasn't it? Because the the Premier League were actually pushing for a 12-point deduction um, and even an even stiffer punishment. That's kind of come out through through briefings to the media. Um, I mean, do you think Everton have been picked on a little bit here? I mean, they're not a club as big as um, the one on the other side of Stanley Park. They're not as big as Chelsea, Man City, who also um, got their own charges to deal with. So is it because they're our smaller club? Do you think that's an issue here? Um, look, I, I don't want to get carried away with that sort of train of thought. Um, I think the certainly the political environment right now about the independent regulator is, I think, something that is weighing on people's minds. And there is there has been some sort of political um, thought in mind about how, the, how that looks in terms of can the Premier League run the game or not. I believe that has played a factor. Uh, but more importantly... I think for me, and looking at my time with uh, the Premier League, particularly when Richard Scudamore was the head, I think Scudamore would have found a way through this whole mess without getting to such a, a crucial, uh, difficult position that we're in right now. He's unleashed what I consider to be a legal position. You've, you've mentioned already about the clubs that are going to be looking for compensation. There's now potentially the thought of Everton having to sue Man City and Chelsea if they get found. The whole thing becomes a legal merry-go-round. And if I'm a chief executive, I then have to look at probably 30% of my budget being spent on KCs rather than on a left back. Mm -hmm. And that's taken the Premier League into a whole cycle of, uh, of real big issues. And I think Richard Masters has to be uh, very, you know, has to be looked at in terms of the way he's led the Premier League into this issue and not found a way through it. When I looked at the actual hearings, uh, the finding of the hearing, there was enough on both sides to have found a compromise way through. I'm absolutely convinced of that. And there could have been a, a different way to approach this. And I do think that, you know, for a financial penalty like this, it should have been a financial uh, fine. Uh, and that's to me, would have been the correct way to have gone and also would not have led the Premier League into this spiral of legalese. I mean, it's quite interesting you say that there should not have been any points deduction at all. I mean, um, I mean, this this is kind of a high level case, and I think the Premier League did slightly change their statute, didn't they, in, in October, shortly before um, shortly before the commission commission findings were went public. 
Um, so the Premier League do have the opportunity to, to go really big, don't they, with with their punishments. Um, I mean, was it was it a case of Everton failing to represent themselves properly, do you think? And um, fired Mashiri, the owner. I mean, I, I spoke last week on the on the podcast. I mean, I, I, I've been told by senior sources he was absolutely slaughtered by the commission. Um, and was was he part of the problem and how Everton represented themselves? <laughs> Look, I've got no doubt he would have been slaughtered by the uh, commission. I think um, really he's, he, he hasn't got a leg to stand on in that case. And the fact that Everton had pleaded that they had not broken uh, the the barrier of um, the, the relevant threshold of 105 million and then amended their pleading to say they had um, was very confusing for me to have done that. Uh, and there's no doubt this comes from the top. Uh, and... It just smacks to me of Mashiri either taking orders from third parties himself or not really handling the, the whole issue properly and being aware of the dangers that the spending cycle was going to bring when they had that splurge over three or four seasons. We, we've got to wait until the appeal as well, because until we know the final penalty that is, that is given to Everton, then you don't really know what uh, the scale is going to be. My own opinion on the appeal is that there may well be um, a reduction a considerable mm. reduction and either suspended it could well be a points deduction but suspended uh and then you'd have to look at then how that would um sit against a man city um you know situation you've so. just watched a segment from football insiders brand new podcast the inside track with me lewis pierce alongside the guests on the show thanks very much for tuning in please do give the video a like comment your thoughts on the topic and feel free to share on your social media pages if you want to listen to the full podcast episode click the link in the description below keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on the inside track